Welcome to Crystal Viewer 11. In this tutorial, we'll learn how to visualize crystal and molecular structures, including how to rotate and zoom, use perspective, switch to an out of screen 3D stereo mode, animate sequences of structures, navigate between various structures in the current folder, and also learn how to share structures with other programs and how to export graphics. Let's start by looking at one of the structures in the gallery. We can double click any of these uh, thumbnails to show an interactive viewer. Mac users can also use an expand gesture on their trackpads to zoom in on whatever structure is under the thumbnail. So here we have our zoomed in crystal structure and we're showing part of the lead sulfide structure. This is the mineral galena. Now, before we start to interact with the structure itself, let's look at the other items in the viewer. Now, in the bottom left hand corner, we have a set of axes and these help us orient ourselves relative to the crystal structure. In the bottom right hand corner, uh, we have a scale bar and this is marked in angstrom units where one angstrom is 10 to the minus 10 meters. That's 0.1 nanometers. Angstroms are the standard units in crystallography because most atoms have radii close to one angstrom in size. In fact, we can click and drag the scale bar and use it as a kind of microscopic ruler. So if I position it over this lead atom, you can see lead atoms about two angstroms in diameter, one angstrom in radius. This sulfur atom, yellow sulfur atom, is a little bit bigger. So how did I know which atom was which? Well, in the top right hand corner of the window, we have a legend which helps us identify which color corresponds to which atom in the structure. I notice that we can show or hide the axes, the scale bar and the legend by using the model menu. Now let's talk about scaling. When you open a structure in Crystal Viewer, it is auto scale to fit the available space. But we can override this. We can scale using the mouse. And to do this, we need to hold down the command key or the Windows equivalent of the command key. And then we can click and drag up to make it bigger or down to make the model smaller. Perhaps it's more intuitive to use a trackpad. And then we can use a simple expand or contract gesture to change the scale. Uh, you can also change the scale using this pair of scale buttons on the toolbar. Expand, contract. And you can always reset the scale. We can auto scale using the model menu. Model, auto scale. Now let's talk about rotation. Now the easiest way to rotate is simply to click and drag with the mouse. And here's to be how we need to do that. So to rotate about a horizontal axis, we can click and drag vertically. So you imagine that there's a rotation axis passing from the left to right across the screen. Now to rotate about a vertical axis, then we drag left and right. And to rotate about an axis that passes out of the screen towards the viewer, we can hold down the shift key on the keyboard and then we can rotate in a clockwise or an anti-clockwise manner. Now this again is easier to do with a trackpad because we can use a standard rotation gesture on the trackpad or we can slide two fingers across or up and down the trackpad to rotate, rotate about the other axes. Now, if you're fortunate enough to have a MacBook Pro with touch bar, you can use the rotation dials that we have provided to smoothly rotate about any axis. Now, I'm going to make my touch bar visible on the screen. So we want to choose the little dial button and we can click that and you can see a set of three rotation dials which are color coded red for the screen x-axis, green 
for the screen y-axis, that's the axis that passes from the bottom to the top of the screen, and blue for the screen z-axis, that's the axis that passes out of the screen towards the viewer. It all makes sense once you start using this. So we can simply click and drag the touch dials to rotate. This is the screen x-axis, this is the horizontal rotation axis, this is the vertical rotation axis, and this is the axis that passes out of the screen towards the viewer. So I'm doing this actually using my touch bar, but you can see what's happening on the screen using this little floating window. Now to hide the uh, rotation dials, you can click the little cancel button. Mac users with a touch bar also get some other rotation controls, so we can rotate through 90 degrees using these little buttons. You can change the rotation angle using this rotation angle pop-up. You've got your pair of um, zoom buttons and there's also a view direction command. Okay, let's hide the touch bar for the moment. We can go to the model menu to rotate about 90 degrees through any of the screen axes. And we also have the option of auto rotation which we can get to using the auto-rotate button in the toolbar. Now you may notice that there's a degree of perspective that's been added to this model. The atoms in front look slightly bigger. By default, Crystal Viewer applies a subtle amount of perspective to any structure that it loads. This helps to enhance the sense of depth. Uh, you can toggle this on or off using the model menu model. To turn perspective off we choose an orthographic view. Now the back atoms are the same size as the foreground atoms. Good for measurement but maybe not quite so good for visualization. Let's go back to our perspective view. Now you'll get a much better sense of depth using true 3D. And for this you'll need a pair of red-blue stereo spectacles. Let's explore. We can enter the 3D viewing mode by clicking the stereo button in the toolbar. We now get two different views of the structure superimposed. And these correspond to what each eye would see, but they've been tinted red or cyan. And your red blue glasses will filter these images so that each eye only sees the correct image. You'll still get a color image though, and it can look really impressive especially if you rotate your image. This helps to relax your eyes. Now let's talk about depth and what we call stereo standout. And this is a way in which you can make your models look even more impressive by making them appear to float outside the computer screen, over your keyboard or even over your desktop. And to do this, we can use a little slider control to move the model from the front to the back. Now, if you move the mouse pointer over this stereo button, you might notice a little downward pointing arrow, and that indicates that if you click and hold, then you'll get a popover. And here's our standout slider. And if I click and drag, then you'll see that the color tinted images shift. And if you're looking at this using red blue glasses, your model would now appear to be behind the computer screen. Now, this is actually quite a relaxed way of viewing, but it's not quite as impressive as making the model come completely out of the screen and float towards you. Now you do also have the option of switching to a grayscale viewing mode. Some people find that more comfortable, uh, but it's not quite as impressive as color stereo. Okay, let's turn off the stereo by pressing this button here. Let's turn off the auto rotation. And let's now look at how we can navigate between different structures. Now, if you move the mouse to the left or to the right of the screen, then you'll see back or forward buttons. And these allow us to navigate to different structures in the current folder. In fact, if we go back to the folder, you can see these were the structures on either side.
If you move the mouse down to the bottom of the screen, then we see a file strip, which represents all of the structures in the current folder. Now you can click and drag the file strip with the mouse to reposition it. Or if you have a trackpad, we can slide the strip along and we can just click on individual structures to load them into the window. If you move the mouse up, the file strip disappears, move it down, and the uh, file strip reappears. And we can exit the viewer in one of three ways. You can press the escape key. You can do what we did to view the structure in the first place, simply double click. Or you could press the back button in the toolbar. Now we're going to take a look at animation. Many structures in the Crystal View library contain more than one structure. For example, this sodalite file. These contents we can preview by sliding the mouse over the structure. If we open this in the viewer, we'll see things in more detail. We can see that this file contains three structures, which are represented by the three thumbnails towards the bottom of the screen. And we call this the view strip. Now, by default, this sequence of structures animates so that you can see all the views. But you can override the animation simply by clicking on any of the thumbnails to load the corresponding structure. And you can restart the animation by double clicking. Animation is particularly useful when trying to understand how structures change with pressure or temperature, say. Let's take a look at the structure of quartz as a function of temperature. Here's a multi-structure file showing quartz changing on heating. In fact, this file shows the alpha beta phase transition in quartz at about 570 degrees C. We can preview it in the browser like this by moving the mouse over the uh, thumbnail, but things really come to life in the viewer. Now we can see the structure animating. Let's change the model type to make it simpler. We'll go to the model menu and I'm going to choose a polyhedral model. So this is a simplified representation of the structure. This is very commonly used to complex structures where we want to replace a group of atoms, in this case, four oxygen atoms around one silicon atom, the so-called silicate group, represent that by a three-dimensional shape, in this case, a tetrahedron. And you can see how the structure changes with temperature. And the symmetry is changing from threefold to sixfold, and then back down to threefold, and so on. Now we're going to stop the animation by just clicking on a thumbnail. This is the low temperature phase of quartz. And I can click and drag with a mouse to scrub backwards and forwards through the sequence. Let's restart the animation by double clicking. And the really cool thing is that I can rotate the structure whilst it's animating so we can see how it looks from different directions. Now we can use the output menu to share this structure with other programs. Here's our little output menu button. And I can share the three-dimensional structure with Crystal Maker, with Crystal Diffract for X-ray or neutron powder diffraction simulations, or single crystal for any kind of single crystal diffraction simulation, especially good for electron microscope diffraction simulation. We can also share images, the 
current screen image with mail, messages, photos, or we could even share it with another program or computer using AirDrop. So all of these options are available to Mac users. Um, we could also copy or print using this menu. Uh, Windows users can get to those commands using the edit copy command or the file print command. So that was a quick tour of the viewer, showing how to rotate, zoom, navigate, animate, and output structures and graphics.